Today, we're going to be creating this particular black hole or wormhole kind of animation using geometry nodes. We've created something very similar previously using just the default cube and simple deform modifiers. You definitely should check that out if you haven't already. But before you do that, let's find out how you can do the same thing or something similar using geometry nodes. In our default scene, we're going to go ahead and bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to add in a new window and change the type from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we can press new to add in a new geometry node tree and then we can finally delete the default cube by pressing X after selecting the group input. Now the base effect of the spiral is going to be a spiral node. This is a curve so we can plug it into the group output but in the actual render view we won't be able to see anything if the overlays are switched off. However we can change that later on. The first thing that we want to do is increase the resolution. We'll make it something like 128 and along with that we don't want it to rotate this many times so we'll just rotate it to maybe 0.6 after that, we don't want it to start away from the center, so we can just decrease the start radius and bring it down to something like 0.01. .01. The end radius can also be increased a little bit, so we'll increase it to maybe 2.5, and we can play around with the height a bit later. Now we can press Shift A and search for a join geometry node and plug that in right after the spiral so that we can have a few more spirals coming out. So I want four spirals, so I'm going to use a transform geometry node to do that. So we can just plug this curve into the geometry and this time rotate it about the Z by 90 degrees and then plug this into the input of the joint geometry. So now we get one that's rotated by 90 degrees. Now we can press this little arrow mark to collapse the transform geometry and press shift D to add in another one. Again, connect it up, expand it, and this time change it from 90 to 180 and then plug the output in here. Then again, shift D to create another copy, connect it up, expand it, change this to 270 and then collapse it and connect it into the joint geometry. So there we get our four base spirals. To help us keep track of exactly what we're doing because you can download this file from my Patreon as well and play around with it yourself, so just to make sure you don't get confused while playing around with it, we can select these, press Ctrl J, and then go to the node tab over here and make the label creating the four base spirals. So now that we have that, we can see exactly what it looks like. And I feel like, yes, the height has to be increased quite a bit. So we can maybe increase that as well to six for now, but we don't want them to just be singular lines like this. We want them to actually be multiple lines added in together just for some spice. So to do that, again, we'll go ahead and press Shift A and search for another join geometry node plug that in right here and we're going to use a transform geometry again and we want about three spirals for each of the main spirals so we can use three transform geometry nodes or two transform geometry nodes but this time we'll rotate it about the z by 80 degrees and then plug that into the joint geometry and here you have the second strand so now we want another one so we'll take this transform geometry shift d change it from 80 to something like 85 and then again, plug it in and plug it in. And then you can collapse the joint geometry and now we have the other spirals. So again, you can take all of these, press Ctrl J and just label them to know that these are the close duplicates. But now we want another thing as well. This is currently in one particular direction. We want this to also happen as a mirror copy at the bottom. So to do that, we'll press Shift A and search for yet another joint geometry node and another transform geometry node and plug this in here, this out here, and rotate it on the y-axis by 180 degrees. And there we have our duplicate at the bottom as well. So we can take these and again, control J and label it as side duplicate. Once you have that done, we want this to actually rotate and you can do that using a transform geometry. But if you do that after the side duplicate, both of them are going to rotate in the same direction, but we want the one on the top to rotate in one direction and the one at the bottom to rotate opposite to that. So to do that, instead of having the transform to rotate after the duplicates, we'll place that before the duplicates. So we'll go ahead and press Shift A and search for a transform geometry node. Plug that in after this joint geometry and use this one's output to go into the transform geometry over here. And now if you actually see it rotate on the Z axis, the two arms that are being formed are going to rotate in opposite directions, which is exactly what we want. So we can bring this back down to zero. Again, select this, press Ctrl J and just label this as animation. So now we know exactly what this one does. Next up, I actually need these to be visible when we switch off overlays as well. So to do that, you can either make these as curves with constant thickness. To do that, we can press Shift A and search for a curve to mesh node. And for the profile curve, we can search for a curve circle. But another thing is also just using a curve line. So right now, this is what a curve circle looks like. You can decrease the radius to 0 0.01 
And if you switch off overlays, now they're seen as nice little spirals. So this is one thing that you could do. However, another thing that is possible is pressing Shift A and searching for a curve line and plugging this into the profile curve. So that way you can of course reduce the thickness by changing around with the Z end, maybe 0.25. And what I like about this is that it actually tapers off really well at these edges. So if you see, it actually starts off fairly thick over here and it slowly tapers off. If we increase the Z thickness, you can see how the tapering is actually happening. So that's tapering off from being fat to thin. And that's actually why I'm going to be using a curve line. There are other ways to do that, but I think this is the easiest way in the situation that we are dealing with. So I'm just going to keep this as 0.25 and there we have it. Next up, we can again select these, press Ctrl J and call this making them visible. And now I want a circle to be present at the center or a sphere, which is going to make or act as the main object. So we'll press Shift A and search for another join geometry node. Plug that in right here, press Shift A and search for an icosphere. And for the icosphere, we can increase the subdivisions, plug this into the joint geometry. And once it's here, you can play around with the radius to something that you like. Maybe we'll go with 0.25 and that's just going to be our base sphere. So now, of course, this icosphere and all of these have to have their own materials. So we'll go ahead and press Shift A and search for a set material node. And I also want it to be smooth. So I'll go ahead and press Shift A and search for a set shade smooth node. Now I can take these, press Ctrl J and label this as radiator because it's what's radiating the actual lights. Now, of course, we need to set the material for even these lines. So let's shift A, set material, plug it in here. And we can also set shade smooth, although that's not going to make too much of a difference, but it's always safer to do so. Now we can actually give these materials. So we'll go to the material properties over here. Let's plus add in a new material slot, and then we can press new to create a new material. Select the original material. We can call this as the rays, we can call this material as the radiator. And then from the radiator set material, we'll select it as radiator. And for the set material, we'll call it rays. And we should be all set with the geometry node section. Now we can start off with the animation section followed by the texturing. So we'll set all of our defaults initially. And to do that, we'll go to the render properties, switch on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, and then go to the output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. The end frame can be 150, so that it's a five second long animation. Output can be wherever you want it to be. File format is going to be FFmpeg video and the encoding has to have a container of MPEG4 and an output quality of Perceptually Lossless. Then we can go to our animation section that we created in our geometry node, increase our timeline a little bit, press back to go to frame zero and hover over the rotation and tap I. Then we can go to frame 150, change the Z rotation to 360 and then hover over it and tap I. Then we can actually select the transform geometry node so that the keyframes appear down here and then press T linear. So then when you actually play the animation, it rotates. If you want to see the playback happen in real time, you can change it from play every frame to frame dropping. And that way you'll get an idea of how fast it's actually going to be rotating when the animation is completed. So this seems all right for my liking. However, another thing that I wanted to do is actually have it horizontal instead of vertical. To do that, after everything, I'm just going to go ahead and press Shift A and search for a transform geometry node. Plug that in here and just rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. And that way it becomes horizontal. So now we'll take our camera and actually place it. So we'll press Alt G, Alt R, R X 90, and then R Z minus 90, and then just grab it on the X axis and bring it back. Then press zero to go into our camera view. Again, grab it on the X axis and just bring it back to wherever you're happy with it. And with that, we can actually start off the texturing and background. So we'll select our object again and change the job Geometry node window from geometry nodes to the shader editor. Then we can go to the material properties over here. And we initially have the radiator on. So we can go down to the settings over here, change the shadow mode to none because we don't want this to create shadows. And to actually see changes occur, we can change our viewport shading from solid to rendered. And this is what it currently looks like. So the first thing that we'll do is take the light, press Alt G to clear its location. And there it comes to the center. And because we switched off shadows for the radiator, the light passes through the radiator seamlessly. Then we can actually give the radiator its material. So again, select our object. And if you can't see the nodes in the editor, press period on your numpad to centralize the nodes. We'll go ahead and increase the metallic all the way to one and decrease the roughness. However, we want the outer edges to actually emit some light. 
So to do that, we'll press Shift A and search for a layer weight node, Shift A and search for a color ramp node, and plug the Fresnel into the factor of the color ramp, and then press Shift A to search for a map node. And you can change it from add to multiply and plug the color into the first socket and the second socket we can increase to something like 10 or 20. And when you control shift click this node with the node wrangler switched on you can actually preview the node so right now you can see everything is white but we want only the outer edges to be white so we'll just bring this black in quite a bit and this is what you can plug into the emission strength of the principal psdf and then you can control shift click the principal psdf to actually see it it however if you actually see the emission is black and that's why we don't see any emission so now you can just increase this to white and there we have the emission but we don't want it to be white emissive we want it to have two colors so we'll press shift a and search for a gradient texture and with the gradient texture we're going to search for a color ramp to control the actual colors so we can plug the gradient texture in control shift click the color ramp and you can see that we don't exactly see a black white gradient so we can select the gradient texture again with the node wrangler switched on press ctrl t and you'll get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes and you can change it from generated to object and that'll bring the gradient to the center of the object but we currently don't see a gradient and that's because we actually rotated this on the side and we're not seeing the front on view now because of that we can go ahead and just rotate it on the z-axis by 90 degrees and then when you press zero you see the gradient appear so the two colors that we want for the gradient could be maybe an orangish color and a reddish color so we'll go ahead and choose maybe red for this side and for the other side we can go ahead and choose the orangish color then we can plug this into the emission socket of the principal bsdf and control shift click the principal bsdf to actually see the texture now i feel like we can increase the value of the emission much higher so i'll increase it to something like 100 and that's our base radiator then we can select the rays and give it its material again we don't need the entire principal bsdf we can just press shift a and search for a color ramp node and a gradient texture node again control t the gradient texture switch it over to object and rotate it on the z by 90 degrees and then plug this into the color ramp change the colors to the same colors that you had so this side was the red and this side was the orange and then plug this into an emission node so we'll press shift a and search for an emission node and plug this right in here increase the strength to something like 10 and plug this into the surface now i feel like it's too saturated so i'm just going to desaturate it a little bit and that just makes it look a little brighter so i'll search for a hue saturation value node plug that in here and just decrease the saturation to 0.98 or 97 and i'm going to increase the strength even higher make it 20. now that you have that you can actually go to the world properties by changing this from object to world and there decrease the background color all the way to black and i also want a volume scatter node so i'll press shift a and search for volume scatter and just plug that into the volume socket of the world output and immediately everything goes gray because it's way too dense so decrease the density to 0 0.001 increase the color all the way to white and that just gives it this really nice glow around this area but i could leave it as this itself because this by itself would look fairly cool however i generally add in some more backgrounds so i'm going to do that right now again this is going to be very similar to the technique that was used in this particular video so check it out it's in the top right corner and might be worth watching to learn something so we'll press shift a and search for a uv sphere we'll press s to scale it up and we'll just scale it up till it covers about everything and then we'll press tab to go into edit mode but you can't see anything so we'll switch on overlays and then We'll go to face select mode by tapping this up here and then double tap a to deselect everything c for circle select and then you can use the scroll wheel to increase the size that you select and just select everything in your view so that should be all right and then press x delete faces then you can press tab to go back into object mode and then press ctrl 5 to give it a subdivision surface of level 5 and then go to object set shade smooth and that's your background which is going to reflect everything so we have to actually give it a material so press new to add in a new material over here and change this from world to object again now make it very much metallic and reduce the roughness quite a bit switch off overlays and just scale it up till it's outside your camera view if you want to make sure that it's outside your camera view just select the camera go down to viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one and then you can go ahead and play the animation and just see what you have of course you can texture this and make it a lot more but i think i'll leave the tutorial as is with this for now and of course i might make a few changes before the final render and that's the 
file that will be available on Patreon in case you want to mess around with it yourself. Hopefully you learned something fun in this video and can create innumerable number of sci-fi or abstract animations using this. Have fun using it however you want and until the next video comes out, comment your questions down below. Keep creating and stay creative.